Okay. So I'm going to do the next topic. This is was very interesting. I, I really got into giving some visual aids and I said, oh, shoot, I'm not going to have time to do that. One. But this one's very meaty. So um, we'll be doing more. I think it's better to do it more thoroughly than to, to rush through. Uh, so this question was, I need understanding on how to approach this case. Per guidelines, there is a code first, 36216 and 217, and then 36225 and 226. On the answer sheet, I'll show you the codes. What's the proper way to report these? Should I code each additional? That's your 36218 times four because of the bilaterals that we'll go into. Or should I code 36218 times two because of the other areas explored? So I'm going to show you how to go through when you're doing these first order branches, second order, third order, et cetera. So let's find my sheet. And while she's changing that, I'm looking at what it is. And if you don't know, costo means rib. So mm -hmm. costo cervical, so cervical spine rib. If you want more information, if those didn't, if you didn't know that, you probably need to take our anatomy course. Yep. Good suggestion. Okay, so this one was requested by Beverly. She's a CCO club member, and she has been peppering me with questions, or I say me because I've been answering them. And I said, I feel like she's giving me homework. <laughs> so um, real quick too, Laureen, this is a good time to tell people that we don't want to do the work for you. And so Beverly go, went in and she said, this is what I'm thinking, just like on those others. You know, I'm thinking these, am I right? Or, yeah. would, you know. Oh, and it's more for a tiebreaker. My coworker yeah. says this, I think that, or the provider is saying this, but I think it's this, you know, it's yeah. basically getting a tiebreaker and that's that. And that is helps for teaching. So we can, can mm -hmm. see how their mind is thinking to help, you know, straighten them out. All right. So this is her question. I put the codes here so we could kind of look at it. This is what I need to do. I'm a very visual learner. I have to highlight things. And, you know, look at this, how we teach people to pass the exam, compare and contrast the codes. What's the difference, right? So you can see the 36216 from her question is for a selective catheter placement in the arterial system, the initial second order. And what's the family? It's the thoracic or brachiocephalic branch. The 217 is the initial third order or more selective, fourth, fifth, you know, however, however many splits the vessel takes. Same family though. So you got initial second order, initial third order, or more selective. Then 218 is the additional second, third, and beyond, but it's the, like an add-on code, it's the additional. And then the 225 and 226 from her question, this is for the subclavian or inanimate artery. And then the 226 is for the vertebral artery. So keep those in mind. And she didn't really give me like the op report she has in the past, and I prefer those. But I know it's a pain to have to redact. So, so basically, she gave us a summary. So they started off with an introduction of the needle and catheter into the right common femoral artery. I'm going to show you some pictures, so don't go like, oh, I can't visualize this, blah, blah, blah. Um, actually, I'm going to come back up here as we need to refer to it, but let me just take you to this picture here, because this is the actual breakdown of what's going on. In your CPT manuals, a lot of people don't know this. If you're, if you're not a student and you haven't become one with your manual. That's what we, <laughs> we, we teach in our courses. You really need to get so familiar with your manual. And that's why paper manuals are really the way to learn. Once you visualize and you remember how the paper manual works, using an encoder or like a find a code, then it works so much better. But the CPT manual also has a lot of great graphics and things that explain it. And there's a appendix L vascular families. So check that out in your CPT book and it will really help you with understanding these first, second, third orders. So in this one, she had the right subclavian family and okay, so you see where I have this number two, sub subclavian, right? So we, we have the aortic arch and then off of that aort aortic arch, which I've labeled number one, is the anonymous. So that would be considered 
the first order. And then it splits or bifurcates, I'd like to call it. And then we have the subclavian. So that's why it's a second order. Then off of the subclavian, it's kind of hard to picture. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Oops. Hope I didn't. Yeah, I messed up my slide. Oh, well. Um, that's a little bit better. So the subclavian goes all the way around, but this is where we're, we're looking at. We're looking for this costo cervical trunk and it comes off right here. So we went first order, second order. So this would be a third order. Then they're coming in and they're injecting dye. So just picture like the catheter traveling along. So it comes first, second, and oh, now it's injecting dye here. And it's pulling back out and it's injecting dye in another third order. So it's two third orders is what's going on here. So let me try and put my slide back the way I had it. So initial third order for the right costo cervical. That's your, your 36217. Then the additional third order for this thyro cervical, that's going to be your first unit of 218. Then going on the other side, the subclavian family, we have an initial costo cervical one. So that is a second order branch. So that gets your three, six, two, one, six, because it's your initial second order. And then we had the left thyrocervical. So that becomes your next or your additional three, six, two, one, eight. So now we have two units of our three, six, two, one, eight. Then they also did the bilateral common carotids, which are right here. And there's a special code for that, 36223, and we put a 50. And then the vertebrals, 36226, and we put a 50 because they were bilateral as well. So that's one way to visualize it. Use the picture in your CPT book in Appendix L. And then another way to visualize it is if you're like a table kind of person, they have this table. So if you're coming off the thoracic artery, and because you're reading the op report, you gotta you want to find the path and visualize it, trace it out. People that are VIR coders, they have all the charts from like Dr. Z, and you know they they're laminated. Sometimes they'll use those wipe on wipe off markers. So this is your inanimate. So that's your first order branch, and see on the top it says first order. And then off of that, for our particular case, we came through the subclavian. That's our second order. And then this branches into one, two, three, four different vessels. We, our provider worked on these two, the costocervical and the thyrocervical, and they're both third orders. So that's why we're, we're, when we look at the codes, we're doing the initial third order, 217, and then an additional second or third and beyond. It doesn't matter if it was second, third, or fourth or whatever for the additionals. You tracking with me? Give me feedback. They are super quiet. They I are know. entranced. But I really think they appreciate, because I know I do, the two different ways to look at it. The visual yep. of the structure itself and that table. Some people, that that I'm sure aligns with a lot of people too. Well, sometimes on these images, you're like squinting and you're looking. Is that coming off of this or not? So if you go to the table, they tell you. Like, right. All right. Here's my. Here's my. Oh, okay, that's branching off of this, which is branching off of that. Got it. Yeah. So that that helps a lot. Then, of course, they did the andrography, the imaging, because you don't just put the catheter in there to squirt dye and walk away. You take a picture. Um, that gets reported separately for each vessel that's studied. So we had one, two, three, four, five. So you had five units. And the note here is the right vertebral and common carotids lack documented angiograms. That's why you're probably thinking, but wait, you had the codes for, but got, if you didn't document it, it wasn't done. So that was what we noticed for these. And then ultrasound guidance was mentioned. So that's your 76937, professional component only to um, get the physician paid for their work. Well, I thought it would take a lot longer to do that. No, well, that's pretty intense doing those two different ways to do that. 
I think one of the takeaways is that it gets very confusing because you're dealing with multiple codes. But if you do this type of work, which again, if you're coding these, you're doing multiple, you know, you're doing these all day and it becomes, you get them memorized, you know, so it, yes, it's a lot of codes, but so is knowing a lot of people's phone numbers, you know, and, which I guess isn't a really good because now we don't know people's phone numbers because we have cell phones. But again, it, you, you know, once you get the feel for it, this is not intimidating at all. And then, as Lorene said, you can go to Z Health and you can literally do use, they have all of these great tools to help you. Uh, let's see. I'm going to. I'm going to share something. Oh, did we have a question? Yeah. Christopher just says, I struggle with the guides. Thank you for, the, for working through the table. I, again, I think that is really helpful. Me, my, for myself, I want to see the anatomic structure because that's what I know. But if you don't, if you're not into that, having that listed out, that the, uh, knowing one leads to the other, then leads to the other, this is a great way to get familiar with that anatomy and the verbiage, because this is the way it looks on the report. The report doesn't have the diagram. No, uh, I know the names of the vessels and stuff like that. But so this um, vascular family, if I look at that, that confuses me when I look at this. But if I go look at the diagram and you you say, oh, yeah, that's that vessel, that's that vessel. So mm -hmm. uh, it's important to to know what works for each person. Thanks, and here's the tip. First order can change based mm -hmm. on where you start. Mm -hmm. So be careful of that. So in this one, this is the most common coming off of the aorta. So anything coming off the aorta is the first order branch. That's commonly how it's done. But you could start in a second order branch. It's possible. So be aware of that. So this is the appendix L. And it's a vascular branching model that assumes the aorta or the vena cava, pulmonary artery, or portal vein is the starting point of catheterization. Accordingly, branches have been categorized into first, second, third, and beyond. Note that this categorization does not apply, for instance, if a femoral or carotid artery were catheterized directly, because that then becomes your starting point, and anything off of that is first, second, third. Mm -hmm. So common branching patterns of typical anatomy are shown in the charts and illustrations. No specific coding instructions should be inferred. End users must determine how to best code any specific procedure based on variant anatomy and different vascular access points relative to the vessels selectively catheterized. So you might have to go through the subclavian to get to these you know, we did the thyrocervical and the costocervical. But if they didn't stop here and inject dye, then we're not coding this. This is just the path to right. get to these endpoints. We're coding the endpoints where they injected the dye. Oh, reverse, pull out, go into the other third order. Okay, inject dye. So those are our two endpoints that we're looking to have codes for. And you can now get see videos of these done. And mm. so it might be, it's kind of like all in black and white, but that may help you link your brain to the codes and some of this verbiage. A lot of times they're talking while they're doing that. I would encourage you to go out and look for those. Uh, I don't know if they're on YouTube or, or, or it, I used to go to OR Live, literally O and R dot live. And so that may help it click for you. So here's a question. Get your thinking cap on. So here, for the right subclavian, it's a second order coming off the thoracic aorta. Then we come down here, coming off the thoracic aorta, left subclavian is a first order. Why is that? So if we go to our picture, I think it's on this one. Was it here? No, I can't remember. Yes, here it is. Um, if you look at these clavian, look at the anatomy, how it's different. Coming off the aorta on the right, I know on the picture it's on the left, it gets confusing, but it this is considered a first order piece and then it splits. That's why this is a second order on the right. 
But this subclavian, there is nothing like that. So it is a first order. Isn't that cool? So yeah, to think of the tree and a tree limb always, you know, forks. That's what yeah. they're looking for, those forks in the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so keep that in mind. Hopefully that, that will help you if um, this is one that scares, you know, new students. And you just, just think of branches on a tree and you come off the trunk. Think of that as a, a aorta. And once you can get the main trunk analogy and the first branch that comes off the trunk and then where it splits, that becomes second order. You follow one of the paths and where, wherever it splits, that now becomes third order. So once you can do the coding from there, then you can handle if you get a different starting point. Mm -hmm. Okay, where's first, second, third, and so on and so forth. It's intimidating for me because I am not a CT, CPT lover. <laughs> However, I know the anatomy and I really love the anatomy. So that kind of makes up for it. But that is, that is a niche that some people just fall in love with. And there is a huge demand for interventional radiology or IR coders. Mm -hmm. So if that's an area that you would like to get into, you can start working in cardiology and then, you know, get into, they get paid very, very well. It takes a while to, to build up your skills, but it is a fun area to be in and people appreciate others who have that skill. Looking for medical coding, medical billing, and risk adjustment education? Learn more at cco.us.